Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg, Basic Sorgonomics on this April 17th, 2015. I'm um, ready to talk some tech for the last day of the week. We got a lot of stuff going on this weekend. Uh, I'll be down at RWA, the Renegade Wrestling Alliance in West Newton, PA, doing some filming for their DVD. Uh, go check out them at rwalive.com. I'm also going to be filming a little bit of a documentary sort of interview here on Sunday. Uh, if you know who Virgil is and have some stories, we want to hear from you. Go to joe-dobrowski.com for the video and information on that. Uh, so what are we getting into today? I was intrigued. I actually found this while I was, I was scaring up stories for um, Awesome Cast yesterday. But uh, according to The Verge, there's a movie called Tangerine. That's uh, being shown at Sundance, or has been shown at Sundance. Uh, it's going to be premiering July 10th, and it was shot entirely on an iPhone 5S. Um, we've had this before. We've had short films. Apparently, this is a fuller-length film. Um, mostly, it it uh, it follows a transgendered prostitute uh, chasing after her pimp. I think I, I grazed from the from the topic here. There's no trailers or anything out, so I, I was hoping I'd have a little bit more to kind of graze off of for this. But still, this is something uh, I, I think that's very important. Um, We've had this before, you know, uh, around the time of maybe the iPhone 4, when we were starting to get HD uh, video, uh, you know, we were starting to get see people, oh, we filmed this with an iPhone, we did this with an iPhone, and, and typically um, what you need is, is something a little extra. You can't just take the phone, open up the camera app, and go. That typically doesn't work very well, but you have a good base. And you got to think that's not too far off because when you think about the more expensive pro cameras that you've seen, like the Reds and and, and whatnot, um, looking at NAB footage here this week and realizing how segmented things are, that you have the little box. For those that don't know, and I'll see if I can pull up a Red camera. Um, but basically, what you're buying is a little box. Um, that has all the sensors in it and then you add on all the lenses and everything on top of that so it, it it's not a full camera like you would think it was uh in in, in previous years and actually even my prone sumer stuff uh that i run on is is still in that capacity but if you're uh, if you're on video here you see they're just these boxes and you get these massive lenses and and this is a ten thousand um, dollar tremendous tremendous camera, and that's actually cheap for the kind of thing that you're getting, from what I understand. Ten thousand camera um, that has an H K or eight K. Oh no, the sensor upgrade is eight K. I think it starts at a four K typically on these things. And none of you have TVs that run this stuff yet. We'll put it that way. Four K is typically probably what you have in a movie theater. I think right now. Um, but uh, the, you're starting to see 4K monitors kind of come up on the, on the market. But so think of your iPhone as the same way, or your iPad. It's this unit that that is sort of the same in a manner as this, but you have to add stuff on. There's uh, in their case for this movie Tangerine, they again using an iPhone 5S and they use an app called Filmic Pro. Uh, let's see, I had it pulled up here. This is, uh, app called Filmic. So what does Filmic Pro do? Let's investigate. Follow along with me as the page loads and I find more information on this topic. Um, typically, this is software that just helps out. Uh, uh, okay, here we go. Um, it looks like it gives you a lot of readouts. And this is like a lot of professional readouts. Like, I'm still gathering myself on some of the stuff that the camera spitting back out at me like apertures and such like that um i have a pretty good understanding enough to get work done uh but you know i'm not a, a cinematographer or anything like that to, but but it'd be nice if i had one on hand that did understand that to make the stuff look better um but basically you have a lot more control over your lighting over over z stops f stops i'm i'm sure i just yeah threw that one out there dan hooven is probably laughing at me right now um but you get to do something a little more significant and have more control over that that small small sensor camera that's in your phone. The the that camera you, you understand? Okay, it's a good quality camera. The difference is when you have that small of a lens, that small of a sensor, um, it's harder for it to get in the light and process that. So what you need to do is create ideal situations. Uh, typically, when you're taking pictures, great lighting, for instance, right? Um, not difficult lighting, and, and a lot of those are getting better at that. But when you're doing video and you have some some app like this, you can actually control things. Wonderful. And the other thing is, 
Um, I know there's tremendous rigs that you can use for uh, enhancing these things. Uh, Z that was over at, I need to catch up with her actually. Uh, Z that was at PodCamp really, it got me going again. So I gotta get an iPad so I can do some of this stuff. Um, had this rig where she was holding the iPad in it. It kind of went around so you could hold it with two hands and there were um, mounts on it. So you could mount a light, a microphone. You don't want to use, of course, the internal microphone in your iPhone. Uh, you want to get something that breaks out and you can put a shotgun mic on that or you can pull it off and do a lavalier or, or something, something different. Probably, probably if you're doing a, a project like these guys on Tangerine, they're pulling a whole other audio source anyways. They probably got a boom mic over them and that's going to some kind of uh, digital recorder and they sync it up in post because that's how real movie people do it. Um, I'm kind of an all-in-one guy myself and plus I can never afford the boom mic guy uh, in, my, in, in my kind of project so we make do with what we have. But uh, but but this these are the possibilities. Um, there's a, a, a perfect example and this is one that I have looked at for a while, and this has been on my wish list for a good long time, so I could maybe do a little bit more. Um, there's this thing called an Ali Bubo, and, and there are plenty, plenty, plenty of things like this on the market these days. And your iPhone goes in there, and again, yes, it looks like a battering, um, but uh, you see, you put that giant lens on it. They say they used, I think, an anamorphic lens on this tangerine film. Um, and you got an external microphone right there on the side and, and the phone goes in there and, and you can mount this on a tripod. You can mount stuff onto it and you can have a little bit more ex enhanced of a, of a recording experience on an iPhone. And yes, the iPhone is like a $600 device that then you're adding another two, three, four hundred dollars of equipment on this. That is still tremendously tremendously cheaper than even a prosumer solution and pro, what, be, what do i mean about prosumer um this is uh, these are the cameras that i'm operating with like the uh, uh for me a sony fx uh 1000 go look it up uh, that's a mini dv one but of course there's there's ones now that you just throw an sd card in and it and records to that um that's three thousand dollars easy if not more that could probably range up to five thousand dollars for something like that. Easy for for something on that level, and that's just a HD 1080p uh, kind of situation. You're doing HD 1080 on these phones, and if you do it right, you won't be able to tell too much of a difference that was on one towards the other. At least generally, like some of the professionals will probably be like, "Yeah, it's an iPhone." You know, every once in a while, I point it out when there's a film that uses an iPhone or on the wrestling shows. They've been doing promos with iPhones and putting them on my big screen TV on WWE wrestling. That's been pretty amazing. John Stewart, turn your your phone the other way. Um, but it, again, just kind of look in this possibility, and anybody can make movies. Now it's the content that needs to be important. Because anybody can grab one of these things and for under $1,000 have enough to make a movie. And look, get into Sundance. I think that's pretty cool, for one thing. And, and uh, kind of shows, you know, nothing is really holding you down from making that thing. Right? We have these things in our hands. I, I tell everybody, you know, recently, you know, when we're talking about video, we're talking about the video challenge this week. It's been, you know, listen, you have the thing in your hand. More likely than not, if you're into this kind of stuff, you have an Android or an iPhone, you can do the video, you can put it with an app, push a button, it's on YouTube, and you can tell your story. And if you want to get fancy, these are the possibilities you can go to. Start with what you have, upgrade as you find, as you see fit. So, what do you think about, uh, would you go see a movie filmed on an iPhone? Maybe this isn't the story for you, the uh, transgender prostitute story, but, you know, what if, uh, I, I'm not saying that they would do Star Wars on this thing, but what if they did a nice movie that that that, that you dug, you know, would you would you see it on the big screen? Would you rent it? Would you, would you do anything else? It, is the appeal that they shot it on an iPhone, and you want to see kind of how it turns out part of that equation? Let me know, uh, at Sorgatron on the Twitter, Sorgatron.com, or uh, follow us on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher. Spreaker, and uh, comment anywhere you can. Let me know what you think about this situation with the iPhone movies. We'll see you guys next week on Basic Sorgonomics. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.